All right, hey, how you doing? And this is Chef Jay, it's Culinary Creations here. And uh, today, we've got a really good show for you. We're gonna start and go back to the basics. Um, we are streaming live on YouTube, first ever. Uh, so, if you have any questions, I have my tablet right here with me. Go and type in questions that you have or anything else like that, and I will try and answer the questions as we're moving along. Keep in mind, this is live, so, if I have to think about it for a second, we'll be fine. But I know everything, so it's all good. So today, we're going to uh, start with going over different types of equipment that we have. Um, the format is pretty much going to be, we're going to go over the equipment. If you have questions, type in the questions. Um, in future shows, what's going to happen is, I'm going to actually use most of this, or if not all of this equipment. We're going to have the next uh, video is going to be about actually using the item so we're going to cut up some things whole chickens we're going to cut up some watermelons we're going to cut up just a lot of different things in order to show you how to properly use the knives and the other tools that we have all right so i posted my link and if we don't have any questions i'm going to start uh right now so over here we have a few items that we need to look at. Um, so what I will do is I'll start with the main stretch of items here. And these are all of your knives that you're gonna be using um, in the kitchen, all right? So what we have is, and I'll start from down here and work my way up. So we have pairing knives. So pairing knives essentially are knives that you're gonna use for small items. If you're gonna be um, you know, paring something down. That's pretty much what it's for. So if you have like lemons, if you have uh, small little intricate detail work that you're going to be doing, if you're going to be cutting smaller items, a paring knife is always good to have. Um, the thicknesses on the paring knives you'll see is a lot different. This one's a lot thinner than this one. So depending upon what you're doing, you're going to need to have a, an assortment of paring knives. Okay. The next one I have here is called a, anybody, anybody, no? Okay, this is called a boning knife, all right? And it's called a boning knife because of two things. One, it's short and sharp blade, okay, and pointy blade, but also, if you notice, it's not very flexible, okay? It's not flexible at all. This is a tool that you use when you are boning chicken, uh, beef, any type of animal, this is what you would use. Um, you necessarily wouldn't use this for a fish because what's gonna happen is this knife is so rigid that it will cut through the fish um, a little too much. But if you're trying to get through bone and sinew, this is a great tool and it's a boning knife, okay? The next one we have here is a serrated bread knife, okay? And you'll see that it's serrated because it has those little indentions on the side, all right? And that'll allow you to cut through bread. This is also a great tool if you are cutting fruit, melons, uh, cantaloupe, honeydew, uh, any types of melons because it grips really well. You'll also be able to use your chef's knife but you'll find that this tool is great. This tool is also great for slicing tomatoes and things of that nature. So this is a great tool and it's called a, anybody? A serrated bread knife. Okay, thanks for the crowd participation, I appreciate it. So, I'm gonna pick up three knives now. So if you look at all three of these knives, they're all three different lengths, okay? So we have, a six inch, a 10 inch, and a 12 inch. These are all what we call chef's knives, okay? So these are gonna be the workhorses in the kitchen. They're really gonna do the majority of the work that you have in the kitchen, all right? And a chef's knife is gonna be something that, with any knife, is gonna be determined upon how you like the feel. This knife, and this is a Hinkle, is a uh, professional S series. 
You see the handle is ergonomically designed so when you hold it, cutting for a long time, it grips, okay? This knife right here is a straight chef's knife, okay? And this chef's knife, I'll show you something in one second on when you're getting knives. Um, and then this is also a chef's knife, okay? So you'll see this one, and this one is a Mercer, and you'll see that this one also has a handle that's not a straight handle or a curved handle, but it is kind of ergonomically designed. So let me take a step back. So when we look at this knife, we have several parts of this knife. Um, first off, we have what's called the heel of the knife, and that's the back end, the heel, okay? We have the tip of the knife, okay? And this that runs all the way down is the tang, okay? So that's the full knife itself. So this will be the middle part of your knife, this will be the butt of your knife, and this will be what's called a bolster, okay? So this is the bolster. And you'll see that this knife has what's called a full tang. The metal from the knife runs all the way down into the handle, okay? So that's going to make this knife a lot more sturdy than another knife. I've literally had this knife for 12 years, okay? And it hasn't broken, it hasn't done anything, and I use it every day. So you'll see the rivets in the knife handle. Okay, some knives don't have rivets in the knife handle. Some of them, the tang goes all the way through, but there are no rivets in the knife handle. Um, and that's, again, all what you determine to be your own thing. Um, when we're talking about holding a knife, we talk about putting the knife in the palm of our hand to kind of see where we are. And then if we use this finger as a guide and this finger to hold on this side, now you can get all of your motions with that. You know, I see some people hold a knife like this, which is okay if you can hold it, but if not, sometimes you don't have that ability to stop the knife if you're going to cut into something and it slips, okay? And again, knives, as you notice, all have that little arc, okay? So when we're cutting, we follow that arc when we're cutting. Okay, you don't want to chop straight down with your knife because you'll ruin the blade, okay? So those are the... Oh, the other thing are knife guards. A must for any kitchen, whether you're a professional or a home cook, unless you have a block, you won't want to keep your knives laying around. You want to get a nice knife guard. These literally cost 50 cents. They'll slide right on your knife. So you just get your knife guard and you put your knife in, right? So that's wrong. You wanna put the arc side down, okay? Because then if you notice, it goes up against the bolster, all right? So the flat, the flat side goes over here, and then the side with the, with the angle on it goes up against the actual knife. Now, one other thing that's very important, and this is a little nasty story, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. When you put your knife in your knife guard, okay, you don't want to pull it out like this. Not a good thing, okay? Um, when I used to teach at Le Cordon Bleu, we would give people knives, and they would say, hey, those are great knives, and everything else like that. So we have all the knives come in a, in a um, knife guard, just like this, and they're taking their knives out, and the person literally has the knife in their hand like this, and pulls across the entire palm of their hand with their knife. So when you put your knife in, put it in at an angle, tilt down. Same way when you're taking it out, lift up and pull out. And then that way you don't have to worry about cutting yourself. When you put it in, angle down. When you lift it out, up and out, okay? So here's the next big thing. What is this and what is this? They are both called steels, okay? Now, one actually just hones your knife. So what is honing your knife? And this is perfect. So your knife has a tip on it like this. As you use your knife, the tip gets out of alignment, 
where you'll have it, one part will be higher, one part will be lower, one side will be a little bit broken and jagged and the other side won't be. What you need to do is you need to hone your knife on a regular basis. Every time you start cutting, you hone your knife. So to hone your knife, you hold your steel up, you hold, I know a lot of people have never heard of this, a matchbook. Think about a matchbook. If you put your knife on the steel, 10 degree angle, think about a matchbook. If you put a matchbook in there, we okay? It what, stopped. What do you mean it stopped? It just cut off. Can you go back? Can you start over? Mm-mm. You can't start over. Look. What the hell is that? I don't know. I'm telling you, it just went off. I think you're still live. Are you still live over there? No. What's happening? It's off. What happened? I'm not oh, still no. live. I, oh my god! Well, there's the beauty. <laughs> There is the beauty of live. We have Steven Spielberg behind the camera, and uh, yes. Uh, I was the one who said it was. Still I'm live. sorry, and my beautiful daughter Jayana over there said it was still live. Thank you. Oh, we have a Klino color guard. Is that like an advertisement? Anyway, so what I was saying before, so rudely interrupted by the non-real break, is we're live, baby. We're live. So this is how you sharpen, how you hone a knife. So you have here, 10 degree angle. People say 10 to 12, 10 degree, fine. And then you just pull the knife down from the, what is this called? Okay, very good. To the what? Yes, exactly. From the heel, uh, from the, ten, the bolster to the tip, all the way down. And then you go on the other side, same way, okay? And then as you develop your knife sharpening skills, you'll be able to go faster, which it really doesn't make a difference how fast you go. People are like, oh, I can go so fast on it. It doesn't matter whether you go a million miles an hour or one mile an hour. As long as you do five on one side, five on the other side, it doesn't matter how fast it gets done. All right, so what was I about to say? I was about to say, put my knife down, this is a sharpening steel, okay? And this is a diamond sharpening steel. What, me, what that means is that there are diamond chips in the steel that allow it to get a little bit of sharpening as you, um, as you hone it. You're gonna hone it the same exact way, okay? And you'll hear it sounds a little more coarse because it is. The diamond steel is a little more coarse than the regular steel, okay? But this actually sharpens it a little. Ow, that's sharp. It sharpens it a little well, as you are doing it. Now you're actually off. Why? I don't know. It, it went to that screen right there. What screen? What does it say? In Google Play Store. <gasps> oh, shit. Fuck. Fuck. Well, that's ruined. JJ, give me some rice. Rice? Mm -hmm. Maybe soak in rice for a couple hours. That's bullshit. No, it's not. Told y'all that. Oh, shit. Almost dropped it then, too. Oh, I need a rice. Don't turn it on or anything. Too late. I just put a chicken in it. You did? I put a chicken in it. This you're looking for right here? The black, long one? This one? Oh, yeah. What happened? He dropped his tablet in the Oh, I thought somebody cut themselves. That's really not going to work. It will. Trust me. No, but I'm saying it's... Like what happened? 
Okay. There you have it. Are you going to do it again? Yeah. But I think I'm going to use Facebook Live. This is too complicated. <laughs> this is too complicated. God damn. I'm glad this was on there. Or else all of that. See, none of it got wet. Because this was on the back. Jack. Well, we're going to put it in a rice crispy <laughs> store. In a rice crispy store. What the hell does that mean? I don't understand. I said we're going to put it in the rice just to make sure. Oh! Hey. What the fuck is a Rice Krispie store? I wonder what happened. It just like shut off. Did it completely? Yeah, like it just started filming your app, whatever, your YouTube gaming app, instead of filming you. Like yeah. it started filming the camera. It, it was like mirroring itself. whatever was on yeah. the screen. It wasn't filming. Filming the phone. The phone filming the phone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was like a mirror on the thing. That's what the app is supposed to do. But I switched it to camera to be slick. All right, go to Facebook Live real quick. Let me finish this up. Do I need to go there? Huh? Oh, I'm uh, No, he's got to do it on his because I'm not logged in. It. No, I'm saying, don't you want to watch it? So make sure oh, you're on yeah. track? Oh, yeah. Well, it's already on there. Gotta go over here. Go to go to my um, Chef J Jones page. The excitement of live television, huh? Wow. Oh, I don't know how you do it. You do what? All that. <laughs> oh, and then you Still want to keep going. That would make me not want to ever do it again. Oh, please. This is what I do. Um, this doesn't have a live feature. Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah, do. Where's, where's Go Live? Babe, this doesn't have a live feed. Hit, hit your post, like if you're going to post something. Hmm? Post. Go Live. There you go, sucker. Come on. Let's go. Get it. Oh, it's on me. Can you see me through this light? How? I'm right here. I can oh. see. Oh, are you not supposed to be talking, cameraman? Hey, cameraman, keep it down. All right, so I like YouTube's live video functionality, but I don't know what happened. Something happened. It just kind of flaked out on me. And, uh... Yeah. Hey, welcome to live television. I also dropped my tablet in the water, by the way, just to let you know. This is very, very, this live TV is very dynamic. So we were finishing up with the honing steels. So let's just go over these items over here. I have a sauce spoon. So when you're saucing things, you just put it right on the plate. Again, these are not tools that everyone's gonna need. These are tools that I use all the time. And this is a muddling whisk. I'm sure someone's gonna text me and say, no, I'm wrong with the name. The reason I call it a muddling whisk is because I use it when I have little items in a cup and I just wanna kind of muddle them around and whisk them together. So I made that name up. So if anybody wants to give me credit, I'll take it. Thank you very much. This is a fish plier. So this is for your fish bones and when you're cutting up large fish like salmon it has what's called pin bones in there so you'll use this in order to pull the pin bones out of your fish not just salmon other things too I'll just work around this way uh, we have ring molds and those ring molds as you can see different sizes um, nobody really molds like food anymore but you know cookies you can cut cookies out and things of that nature um, so those are the different ring molds over here we have a pastry bag okay and that pastry bag has multiple tips each one of those tips are for a different purpose and your pastry bag can be this big all the way up to a 32 inch pastry bag okay so that's that's this pastry bag this is a quick quick knife sharper so you have uh, to sharpen your knife 
Normally you use a sharpening stone, it's a long block, and I don't, mine's is downstairs, I don't have it with me right now, but sharpening stone, and you sh use your knife and you go across the stone, or if you need a quick fix, you put your knife in here, tilt it up against the red bar, and then just slide across. Sharpening, it's real good for a real quick applications of things, okay? so. Plating, I'm a plating snob, as most of you know. I like to have little tools, so if we're doing microgreens. Now, what is this really used for? Let's see if you can see that. Can you see that? Be still. You said be still, sorry. Okay, all right. So, this is actually when you get crabs or lobsters and you pick out the meat in the inside, that's what these are for. But I use them when I'm plating because I can plate intricate things like microgreens and things of that nature. So for me, these tools have multiple purposes. The next thing when we talk about plating, good old brushes, okay? They look sexy on a plate. You brush on your sauce on a plate and uh, we'll go over some plating stuff at some point in time. All right, something you can never, ever, ever not have, a thermometer, a good thermometer, digital, analog, whatever, just as long as you can make sure your food is safe, okay? This is a melon baller. So if you scoop or a melon scooper to scoop out, this is a Y peeler, okay? Because it's shaped like a Y as opposed to a straight peeler. I'm not a fan of the straight peelers. I like the Y peelers because you can peel quick with these, okay? This is a sauce spoon. So you'll see this sauce spoon has a little angle on it. So if you like doing the swoosh, put it down, swoosh across. You can do a whole lot of other things with your... For those long days after work, a wine opener. No? Okay. So you know you might cook with wine. Make sure you have a wine opener. Okay. A fish spatula. So why is this a fish spatula and not an egg spatula? Well, it's a fish spatula because we know fish is delicate, light, flaky fish. We don't want to go digging around in there with an egg spatula. So look, look at that. Ooh, wow. That bends. So when you go in to lift up your fish, it'll scoop it up like that. Okay, my cameraman's not looking. You see that, cameraman? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, safety gloves, okay? So you don't want to touch raw meat. Right here we have kitchen shears, okay? Tongs, always got to have some tongs, okay? Here I have a little tool that I used to use with my students, and this you can get anywhere. This actually tells you knife cuts right on the ruler. So if you have to make a Macid wand, or you have to make a, a, a Brunoisette, or you have to make a Julienne, okay? So why are you looking at me like that, cameraman? Those are all real terms, look them up. Google it, Google it. So a brunoise is a really small, small, small item that normally garnishes a consomme. A lot of these things people don't use anymore, but it's good to know, it's good for your knife skills. Small dice, large dice, um, you know, there's all different types of things on here. There's also conversions, there's quick recipes, how to make a pate choux. So if you have to make a quick crook and mouche, you could, all right, I'm sorry. If, <laughs> but you never know, someone might be at home and say, damn, I need to make a crook and mouche real quick. So you have a pet, you have a pet issue recipe on here. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> next thing we have, next thing we have is a balloon whisk. So why is it called a balloon whisk? It's called a balloon whisk because you have this round bulbous shape. So when you're whipping air into your item, this gives you a lot of aeration into your products, making whipped cream, making a meringue. I know everyone uses their um, hand blender or their stand mixer, but this is a good way to start. You get the good, you get the feel, you know how it goes from soft peaks to stiff peaks. This is an awesome tool. Next up, we have a bench scraper or a dough scraper. So when you have items on your bench and you want to scoop them up, you just go like that. See that? And it just scoops everything up. So if you're making flour, 
you're making something with flour, you just push it together, and then you have your dough, uh, what I call it, bench scraper, right? Or if you have a big mound of dough and you want to cut it, you just cut it like that, cut it into pieces, yes, that's what it sounds like as you're cutting it. <clears throat> oh, I missed a knife, cleaver. This is beautiful cleaver too. It's nice and heavy. Chopping, cutting up a lot of heavy uh, items. It's very sharp. Okay, it's my cleaver. Measuring cups, always a necessity. Pizza cutter, another necessity in the kitchen. So if you don't have one, make sure you go out and get yourself a nice pizza cutter. It helps you cut stuff even and straight. Okay, these are dredgers. Or let's say you're making uh, crepes and you want to have, okay, you're making French toast and you want to have some powdered sugar on it. You just put your powdered sugar in there, tap the side and it'll come down as beautiful as snow on a cold winter's day. All right, next. Can opener. Demonstrations, no. Turn, connect to the can. And, okay, no, I've been told no. Make sure you have a funnel. This is very good. So if you are filling something, say you get, just got some nice bottles for your oil, you just put your funnel in there, pour your oil in, you know, your hands aren't as steady as mine, so you can't just pour from the bottle into the thing. You're gonna need a funnel. So you just get a funnel, put it in there, and there you go. This is a, another one's gonna say, oh, it's a carving fork. Mm, okay, or as the chefs like to call it, it's a chef's fork. Because as we're picking stuff up, we use this. If we're plating, we use this. If we're carving, we use this. So this has a lot of different uses. It's not just for carving at all. Taking stuff out of the oven, stabbing someone in the eyeball. Um, so these here are optional, but this is something that I have. These are my chopsticks, okay? So again, I have longer pair, that's cooking chopsticks, but these are for eating. I like Asian food. All right, next. Always make sure you have a good supply of towels on hand. Get it, towels on hand. Anyway, uh, towels, so that way you can utilize the following item. Oh, I missed something, a scale, okay? So that you're able to weigh out specific things. So I'm just clearing this board off for a second because I want to show you something very important. Any questions so far? No? Okay, great. So, here we have cutting boards. Okay, I'm being told to wrap it up. Here we have cutting boards. And these are great cutting boards. Let me tell you why. So for each, cu each cutting board, you want to use the color-coded um, cutting board for whatever you're cutting. I know it's cutting a lot, but we're talking about cutting boards. So the red one is always for meat. The yellow one is always for chicken. The green is always for vegetable. And the blue is always for fish. Oh, really, Chef Jay? How can I remember that? Well, cows, meat, red. Chickens, yellow. Poultry. Vegetables, green, and fish swim in the ocean. That's how you remember these things, okay? Prepared foods go on clear or brown. So if you have a brown cutting board, you want to get really fancy in your house and you want to do all the colors of the rainbow, they have brown cutting boards and white cutting boards. So prepared meats would go on a white cutting board, prepared breads and other prepared items, ready to eat foods, sandwiches, would go on a brown cutting board, okay? The one thing that's very important, unless you get, now you have two things you can do. Normally what we do in the kitchen, we'll wet a towel, we'll take that towel and put it down on our surface, and then we'll put our cutting board on top, so that way it doesn't slide around. All right, see how that looks? That's great, you got that? All right, great, great. So, hello? Uh, are we good? I'm being told to wrap it up. All right, well, what time is it? Oh yes. So there you go, day one, 
Well, not day one, but the South, uh, whatever. This is kitchen equipment, and we're gonna go over how to use these things. Uh, knife skills are next. We're gonna show you how to really sharpen your knife the right way, how to hone your knife the right way, and then we're gonna get into cutting up items. Uh, we're gonna cut up all types of things, fruits, vegetables, poultry, chicken, hams, rams, turkeys, rats, you name it. We're gonna cut it up, sorry. We're gonna cut it all up, so stay tuned. Thank you very much for tuning in to Culinary Creations with Chef Jay, and have a good one. Ooh, I hear the sizzle, baby. They're cooking it up. Ooh, 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 ooh. Chicken. It hey, fries. There's no fries. <gasps> then what are we having on the side? Your mother bought rice. Rice? Mm, that's what I said. She was like, yeah, I want rice. No rice. Rice? That's weird. Who has fried chicken and rice? Yeah, whatever you want. Ooh. Okay, so can I fry the fries then? Yes, so. What kind of fries are you frying? We don't got no fries to fry. Yes, we do. Or there's tater tots in there. Okay, so then get that, dump that oil. Don't use that oil because it's been sitting outside. And then I got a brand new thing of oil. Plug it up out there and fry it away, girl. I want some fries too. I don't want no damn way. Ooh. Love you. Why do you do that? He's rubbing his heart because she's going to punch it later. She is. Oh, she says she's going to. You want to see what I did for English? I'm so proud of myself. No. You don't want to see why you're proud of yourself. So what happened on YouTube, dude? Mm -hmm. I think I'm just going to use uh, Facebook Live. Because with YouTube, I had to download that app. Or use Instagram Live. One of the two. Because I know on Instagram Live, you send, when you start a live video, you send notifications to all of your followers that you're starting one. Really? Really? I don't know if you do that for Facebook. I'm not a Facebook person. I think you just post. You don't send a notification. How does that work, hon? Yes, what happens is once you go live, your followers will get a notification that you're going live. Yeah. Were people on? No, nobody was on. There was one virtual, one lady, she was typing. Um, what, what, why didn't you tell me? She never posted whatever it was she was typing. It never showed up. Oh. She was typing about something. She was like, oh, this looks delicious. What looks delicious? I don't know. Maybe that was for something else that you guys had posted. She was like, oh, this looks delicious. Um, delicious macaroni so and cheese. I want to read what? this whole packet. This whole package is due Wednesday. Oh yeah, Amaria was doing that. Um, today's Tuesday. Today's Monday. Okay, and you're gonna start reading that today? I already have that handle. I love that play. I'm literally already. I'm further. I'm the furthest one in my group. How do you know? Because does they are still on like page four. Do Facebook live? Mm-hmm. Well, it wasn't working. I kept trying the entire time. No, you don't. You don't go to Facebook live. Wait, Gianna. You go. You were trying to view Jay. Yeah. You'd have to go to his page. Or That's like, what I did. Or if you go to. No, my you page. have to go to the Chef Jay Jones page. Like, yeah, not his page. It wasn't on the Jay Jones page. It was, it was like, on my Chef page. Like my page would have got a notification that said he was live because I'm on his thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, uh, is it Hamlet? Is First off, it's Hamlet. It's not. That lady. Hamlet. She was like blah 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 blah. blah. Um. Ooh. That looks good. And Twala Nicole Lewis. I don't know who the hell that is. Isn't um, his uncle King Claudius? Mm -hmm. Oh, she okay. was commenting on another post that you did. Oh, okay. fries. Carne is not a fries. Oh, God. Those are so good. <laughs> if I had fries. Did you I have those? No. She bought them. I mean, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, we don't even need to cut up the chicken because it's already cut, right? Mm -hmm. Let me go change my shirt. <gasps> no, you look fancy. I know, but I don't want to get fancy blood on my shirt. No. Mm, what's he doing that cost me blood? I'm in your
they can shoot their flies. But then I have combo practice, like, who does that? You know what I mean? Yeah, who, who does that? What the hell is wrong with people today? Everything. Hey, babe. Am I frying this chicken? <gasps> yes. Oh, so the, can you get up and change the oil oh. while I'm seasoning the chicken, or are you just gonna? To put it in. What? I need a bag. Or put it in a plastic bag. Last time I did that, it leaked through the oil in that thing outside. How does it leak out of the hefty bags? I don't know. It leaked out. I double bagged it with plastic, uh -huh. and then I put it in the hefty bag, and the hefty bag leaked. How? I don't know. And then there was oil on the floor, so I put some flour down. How? I don't know. Did it tip over? No. And now there, because the guy didn't come right away, now there's oil on the bottom of that thing over there. How? Um, where do you want me to put the old oil? How? Oh, okay. Ooh. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah, that's nasty. Don't use that oil. Dump it in your toilet bowl. What? Oh yeah, flush it. Yeah, well here, I'll put it really? down here. You yeah. can do that? Of course you can. Well, I don't know. Well, I can tell you. Get your, oil nice, get your water nice and hot. Did you turn this off? I didn't turn anything off. Uh-oh. It went dead? Did you turn it, power it on? I was trying to. You gotta hold the button down. It's not working? in here cleaning this and cooking somebody else somebody else help or do something like seriously like no joke i'm not no 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 it's not fucking doing it <clears throat> Seriously, and there's a problem every time that you're asked to help or do something. Don't you think that's a little unfair? Like, I mean, come on, man. Come fucking on. Like, 
that's just a little unfair. There's always pushback. You ask to help, there's pushback. You ask to do something, there's pushback. Like, it's just not fair. And if you don't do it, it doesn't get done. It's shit ain't fair anymore. It's not. It really isn't. And it might not frustrate you, but it frustrates the shit out of me. That you ask for something to get done and you gotta get all this fucking pushback. It's a problem for me. It's a problem. And it's for everything. Every fucking thing. It's annoying. Like, no joke, it's annoying. Anyway, you're going to sit on that table when he comes back. Then needs about five minutes or so to get hot. Mm -mm. Boom. Because with that, you can fry like two French fries. Just a little more. Wait. So when you fry, don't dump all the fries in at once. Because what's going to happen? Think about it. No. Think about it. Yes. Why is it gonna rise up? No, not weight. You're putting water in hot oil. You ever put water in hot oil and you see it spider and sputter and puff up? That's what that will do. 
So put a little bit in at a time. You're not, you know, you still gotta, don't even do it now, because I have to, I haven't even started my chicken. But you can get it at least heated up. But don't take that whole bag of tater tots and dump it in there at once. And maybe do a handful at a time. You know? I don't like to splatter the things, so I put them in this and then I dump them in there. Yeah, you could do that too. I don't like to be that close to anything. She's a scaredy cat. I'm scared too. Well, I didn't say throw them in there. All you do is go like this. Well, these are only going to take five minutes, so if you wait for that chicken to be just about done. I'll let you know. These chicken won't take long to cook. What about the steak fries? Is that the yeah, they take about the same time. Did you look at that outside? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought you got whole milk. There is some in the back. Is there? Mom, can you open up the door? Oh, wait. Oh, even better. That can happen. Does this say 12, 11? You don't have to, um, you don't have to plug it in right now. Just wait. No, you get it hot. Oh, Jay said turn it on. Does that say 12, 11? No, that says used by February 27th. Okay, it's still good. There's some whole milk in there. No, this is good. Okay. Half milk, half cream. If your guts, guts get a little bubbly, you'll be all right. It'll come out quick. What time does the garbage man come? Because that garbage is full. I'll take it out. What time does it come? Mm, about eight. Um, okay, before, the reason I'm asking is because I'll take this chicken thing out of here and put it on a plate too. Now, because I won't, I won't have it all done by the time he gets here. Oh, no, I'm being frustrated by this. What kind of vegetables are we going to have? Green beans. Huh? Green beans. Can you make them? Mm-hmm. Thanks. Appreciate you. I'll take the trash. I thought we had some more gloves. Do we have any more? They're probably in one of those bags downstairs, oh, downstairs. From, the, okay. from the party that we never unpacked. <laughs> There's some gloves right there. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Those are actually going back in my bag. I can't go at the watch I don't know where they are. I don't know where they are either. Good luck. They'll be down there for the next hour. I was going to say they're either in one of those IKEA bags, in the giant pot, or in that paper bag by the garage door. Oh, wow. Great. Never mind. Yeah, Jay, that's right. never mind. No, no, no. Don't waste your time. Yeah, don't worry about it. I'm going to put this in. We don't, we, we need to, next time you go, we don't have any big bags. Hmm? We don't have any big bags. Yeah, we do. They're downstairs. The big freezer bags? Oh, no. We have to make big garbage bags. Because I wanted to put, instead of doing it in this, I wanted to. Put it in the freezer bag? Yeah, and just oh. shake it. Yeah, we don't have any of those. Mom, can I break all of this off? Mm-hmm. That th is it that thing? Yeah. Yeah, just break it off. I already broke it. Be careful, please. Hey, hun. Yeah. You know the panko we had? The what? Panko. I think you used them all. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna do. Can the you font the we selected won't. Mom, what? I said the font we selected won't print. It just prints like New Times Roman. Well, then just print it on a regular on a regular printer and we'll cut it. I did. I printed this on the printer in the room. From what? From Microsoft Word. Well, clearly. Microsoft Word on your computer doesn't recognize that font. No? No? Okay. 
I mean, it's gotta look really nice. What is? This on this paper. Once it prints right. Put one of them shits together. Let's see what it looks like with this, with uh, everything together. I don't have all the parts done. Why don't you have all the parts done? You have the outer coating. You have that. I have this. I don't have the accommodation card or the response card done. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Hey, great, thanks. Thank you. The what card? What is an accommodation card? That's what, you, what that means. That's what you put inside the invitation. It tells people where the accommodations are going to be. So you put the park in. Why would you? Why? Why are you doing all that separate? Why don't you can't go on one card. That's not how it goes. So it's going to be eighty-seven leaflets inside of that one thing. It won't be eighty-seven. How many is it going to be? Two. It's going to be more than two because you're asking people what they want to eat as well, aren't you? That goes on the response card. Are you? And then people have to mail that back. No, they're going to go to the website and put it on there. Mm, mm, mm. Look. No. Response card. Combination card. Are you, are you putting all this in here? Yes. You have to figure out what, yeah. So that way. And then there's a gold wax seal that goes on there. Because you have to make sure when you do it, that people just don't read. Oh, okay, there's just this. No, it'll be close, because this is a test one, but you see, these ones actually overlap. Mm. Um, you might want to take that lid off. Cause oh, that's God, like, yeah, that plastic lid can't stay on the top of that. Yeah. Be careful. Is it hot? Yeah. Ah! You know what? That's not funny. Is that door closed? Can you open that door no. to the screen? It is open. Yeah, keep it open all the way. Because it's going to start to get a little, I'm about to start frying. And you notice the alarm goes off or anything. Yeah, What'd you say? When you're frying, one dry hand, one wet hand. 
So when you're burning your item, see there's nothing on here? See that? But there's wetness on here. So if I was to take this hand and put it in there, what would be all over it? That. Right? help it uh, stick. Ah. You can do egg wash, you can do heavy cream, you can do regular milk, you can even do water. I just like milk because it's... <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, clearly she is. If you thought, just know that one, I want your car, and two, I need to raise your closet first. Right? Before What's she does? Huh? She doesn't care. Oh. She already has one, but she wants yours. Uh, yeah, just, you know, just for the collection. I'll start a collection. Wow. So now she's going to be a car collector. Yeah. How do you not get your hands confused? Because I don't get confused. I'm like, oops, I messed up. I've done this more than once. That's a good point. You gotta learn how to cook. I know, I should. I should take some cooking classes before. Gee, I don't know. Who could you take cooking classes from? Somebody's always working. How about True. That? But that's gonna change. I'm not working every day like I used to. And when I do, I'm not staying there for 20 hours. Aren't you off up until Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Monday, Tuesday. First off, you don't want to cook something the same thing. Well, not every day, day but like something, you know, simple, quick, like a little bit. I ate ramen every day for two years. So did I. Macaroni and cheese. Oh, I was balling if I had mac and cheese. Oh, hell yeah. And if I had hot dogs to put in my ramen or eggs, oh, it was like a buffet. What's going on? Uh, you were the messiest cook ever. This is not the hotel. Lupe! Come clean this up, Lupe! See, that's your problem. You think somebody come around or sweep up stuff once you spill it? Lupe! Lupe's always right there in the room. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's too small, so it's way too time. Hey, hey, uh-uh, no. Can you not put no salt in there? I already did. You didn't tell me. Okay, but it's canned items. Look at the sodium content on that can. It's in the can. You asked me to make the green beans. I know how I make them. Okay, I'll eat something else. I'm just, I'm just not. Thank you. Love you.
some paper towels and then get a plate or something for us to put this chicken in when it comes out. Is there a paper bag instead? What the fuck is a paper bag going to do? Oh, slowly down, you put the chicken in a different bag.
hand it over, give it to her, and then use that money to pay for mine. <laughs> you like that? It's all, it's a wait. You give it to her, she gives it to me, I give it to you, you give it back to her later on. I'm when she sure. needs it at the end of the week for something. Really? It's a Jewish dollar. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck does that mean? I've you never know. heard of such a racist statement in my entire life. Yeah, the Jewish dollar passes through its own community like 10 times before it ever leaves. Oh, okay, that's a good thing. Yeah. Juices to the juices. Whereas the black dollar passes like 0. 0.5, not even once. Is that statistically true, or did you just make that shit up? No, that's statistically true. I'm going to post on Facebook that I learned that today from you. Is that will that offend someone? No, it's just that you know, as a black culture, we need to learn how to support each other, and not always try to look for the hookup. If your friend has a business, you don't look for the hookup. You actually support the business by paying for whatever it is. Be supportive in supporting the business, you not think? trying to get hooked up. Hey, Everybody wants to hook up. That's the problem. But what I used to love. In the Jewish community, you want a hookup? The hookup is, hey, I got a friend who was a catering business. He's Jewish too. That's the hookup. But there's also a lot of barter in the Jewish community. Yeah, it's like, okay, well, hey, I'm going to do this for you, so later on. Yeah, or, or I'll do the food, you do the photography, or some shit like that. Yeah, but at the end of the day, they're still paying. Yeah. Um, um, yes? Sorry. Oh, boy. She wants a hat. She wants to have how much chocolate is rubbing my money. How much are you charging for those? $25? No, they're just for the children, so the children are getting 15 But Mrs. Chavez wants one. No, you can charge me 10 Oh, 10 Yeah, Mrs. Chavez wants one. She says that um, it can put the rest of For $10? She offered to pay for 40 kids to go to Ohio. That's four grand. She can afford ten dollars. She said if not, then she'll pay the regular price. Yeah, she's going to pay ten dollars. I don't even know her like that. Oh, do you have massive tax? Have to yeah, it's over there. Okay. So tomorrow you see Ms. Chavez. You tell her your mom said it's ten dollars. I'll give you the hat the next day. I'll ask her if she wants a white or black.
on this Friday, I have my performance set for you. It's at Klein Oak at what time? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. I'll be there. Remember, that's also the same day that I have to get dropped off with the composer. Mm. Okay. Remember, you pay for it in advance. Double book. We'll turn it back. Two places, two places, two places at once. Tomorrow will be the photographer at 6.30 at Starbucks. 6.30 at night? Mm -hmm. Who does business at 6.30 at night? Probably someone who's out shooting things during the day. I'm going to make appointments during the day. i got stuff to do 6.30 at night. Like what? I don't know. Just sound No, we don't know who it is. We don't know. We don't know whether or not that's them. Someone who we're interviewing to be the photographer for the Just the person interview. Mm -hmm. And the DJ people already played. Because he said, "Oh, we we'll meet tomorrow at six thirty, and I, no, at six o'clock." And I said, "No, we're meeting our photographer at six thirty. So can you do it sooner?" And he was like, "Oh, I can probably do it at 5. And He was like, "Well, let me confirm with you by the evening." My DJ? I said the DJ. Oh no, you said my DJ already flicked. Oh. Uh. Like, mm mm. That's the Aaron McCorkle or whatever the hell his name is. <laughs> <laughs> whatever so, his name is. Yeah, like I don't feel like I need to confirm. Like I don't need to re reach out to you. I'm trying to give you some business. You either want it or you don't. Anyway. You can let them know when they call you back. Thank you very much, but we've already selected another DJ at this time. Kiss my balls. Make sure you say that last part. It'll sound good coming from a woman. Because they're on her chest.
down and he turns back. Oh, you're dropping one. No, it's so sad. Now we have five to the Wow. Things. We're going to cut up just a lot of different things 
in order to show you how to properly use the knives and the other tools that we have. All right? So I posted my link, and if we don't have any questions, I'm going to start uh, right now. So over here, we have a few items that we need to look at. Um, so what I will do is I'll start with the main stretch of items here. And these are all of your knives that you're going to be using uh, in the kitchen, all right? So what we have is, and I'll start from down Wow, here. you can even see where it says mode and so camera and all that stuff on the side. So pairing knives essentially are you knives that you're going to use for small items. If you're going to be, um, you know, pairing something down, that's pretty much what it's for. So if you have like lemons, if you have uh, small little intricate detail work that you're going to be doing. If you're going to be cutting smaller items, a paring knife is always good to have. Um, the thicknesses on the paring knives you'll see is a lot different. This one's a lot thinner than this one. So depending upon what you're doing, you're going to need to have an assortment of paring knives. Okay? Well, the next one I have here is called a, anybody? Anybody? No? Okay, this is called a boning knife, all right? And it's called a boning knife because of two things. Can you press One is short and sharp oh, blade, really okay, and pointy blade, but also, if you notice, it's not very flexible, okay? It's not flexible at all. This is a tool that you no. use when you are boning chicken, oh, there are beef, beef, any knife or animal. This is what you would use. Um, you necessarily wouldn't use this for a fish because what's going to happen is this knife is so rigid that it will cut through the fish um, a little too much. But if you're trying to get through bone and sinew, this is a great tool and it's a boning knife. Okay. The next one we have here is a serrated bread knife. Okay, and you'll see that it's serrated because it has those little indentions on the side, all right, and that will allow you to cut through bread. This is also a great tool if you are cutting fruit, melons, uh, cantaloupe, honeydew, uh, any types of melon because it grips really well. You'll also be able to use your chef's knife, but you'll find that this tool is great. This tool is also great for slicing oh, the juice. This is a great tool for the world. You will be able to use your chef's knife, but no problem this tool is great. This tool is also great for the world. Oh, I I 
put a chicken in there. This snow before right here? This one? Turn that chicken in there. Let's see what you got. Use them tongs. Just turn it over. Turn it away from you. Can I use this for a second? No, you can get paper.
Normally you use a sharpening stone, it's a long block, and I don't, mine's downstairs, I don't have it with me right now. But, sharpening stone, and you use your knife, and you go across the stone, or if you need a quick fix, wow. you put your knife in here, tilt it up against the red bar, this and then you just work. slide across. Sharpening is real good for a real quick application really good. of things. Okay? So, plating. I'm a plating snob, as most of you know. I like to have little tools, so if we're doing micro grains. Now, what is this really used for? Let's see if you can see that. Can you see that? You said be still. Okay. Alright. So, this is actually when you get crabs or lobsters and you pick out the meat in the inside. That's what these are for. But I use them when I'm plating because I can plate intricately like microgreens and things of that nature. So for me, these tools have multiple purposes. The next thing when we talk about plating, good old brushes. Okay? They look sexy on a plate. You brush on your sauce on a plate, and uh, we'll go over some well, plating stuff at some point. Correct. Something you can never, ever, ever not have. A monitor. A good thermometer. Digital, analog, whatever. Just as long as you can make sure your food is This is very annoying. This is a melon bowler. I'm trying to bring it to the melon scooper. This is a Y peeler. Okay. It's shaped like a Y as opposed to a straight peeler. I'm not a fan of the straight peeler. Okay. I like the wire peeler so you can peel quick with like these. Okay. This is a soft spoon. So you'll see the soft spoon has a little angle on it. So if you like doing the swoosh, put it down, swoosh across, and you can hold out other things. On Friday, I'm going to some holding and spend the night. Those Saturday. long days after work, the wine opener. Unless you want to you know, drop me off at her house at like 1 o'clock in the morning. No, so wait, on Friday, I need to pick you up and take you where? Friday, I'm going to be at my and then you're going to take me to the hotel or to the school. What's that? Oh. So look. Yeah. I needed to find out, please. So when you go in to lift up your fish, it'll. Can you look at that drawer over there and see if there's a cigarette lighter? It might be downstairs. Uh, safety gloves. Okay. So you don't want to touch raw meat. Right here we have kitchen shears. Okay. Tongs, we're going to add some tongs. Okay. Here I have a little tool that I used to use with my students, and this you can get anywhere. This actually tells you knife cuts right on the ruler. So if you have to make a massive wand, or you have to make a. Uh, uh, yeah. That video is very interesting. like 17 different social medias all in one. Hey, this didn't work. The wick went out. Yeah, it's wax, son. Just eat the wax. Wax burns naturally. Just eat the wax. It'll drip. I'm not very good at this. This is going to be a learning curve. Here, I'll show you how. Okay. Mm. Let me get the chicken before it burns because we won't watch it. Check those fries. I just checked it. It's not done. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, that's nice. Look. Oh, you let a bug up in here. I know, but you need more wax, so... Okay, well, hold on. Let me take this off. This is our test one. Why would you test it on that? This is the test one. I don't know. Leave it on there. Leave it on there. Yeah, that's not enough. So remember, you got to put a piece of paper over the top. This is going to stick to the invitation. That's why I had that little square behind there. Oh, okay. So, what you do, this is what I do, is instead of worrying about the wick, mm -hmm. just drop the wax right on there. See? It'll drip right on. I like the color that it turns out to be. Told you. See? You want to get a lot. Thanks, JJ. Okay. And then I read the directions and said, let it sit on there for a minute. Yep. Ooh. I didn't do it. Just unplug it. Right. Wow, that is a lot, a lot. It is. Then you go like this. Do I put the little touch? No, 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 it's too hot, though. See that? Yeah. Now it really looks like See that? See the J? Mm hmm That's, I don't know, you know, you do it how you want to, but you don't want to put a little drip. You want it to be bigger than the circumference of the thing. You know what I mean? Mm, you dripped on your shirt. It's wax. Once it gets cold, it'll just peel off. What's going on with this thing, though? It's still on fire. Hey, this is how it is. I'll check it. You don't want to use that much because you think it looks sloppy. Well, I understand what you're doing. You didn't see like, what I'm saying. Yeah. But see how you can see the whole, you want to see the yeah, whole but circle. Like, when I, yeah, but when I do it, I'll just make sure, like, I don't want to drip away over here well, and stuff like that. Yeah, I know. But, but that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I like the way you did it. Yeah. And you have a little more. Then, when people get it, it was still wet. They'll be able to crack it. Yeah. Okay, I gotta figure out how no, to. No, 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 I saw that. I hope you did. What's this? Looks like a honeybee. It's a muddler. Did you listen to the video? No. Uh, I mean, I was listening, but I wasn't looking. JJ, you like this? 